it's looking like this is a rift built for this Renekton. He's been able to make so much happen, play in 1v2, 1v3 situations, uh, to quit a veil, in fact, and pairing that together with what looks like a, a Varus alternate, uh, an alternative Varus. Uh, it sounds like some kind of alternative medicine, but it's an uh, alternative Varus. It's Ezreal for BYU. No, I don't know how you, as BJD, look at the games and say that, you know what, Pharos was the problem. It definitely wasn't Twisted Fate, guys. Uh, it doesn't make much sense to me, and they just go for an Ezreal. I wouldn't quite agree on the alternative Varus. He doesn't quite have the pressure, but yes, once he gets to mid game, he does the same things as Varus. He stays in mid lane, he pressures you, and he's hard to kill. He does a lot. He pokes you. He pressures you. That's true, but his laning phase is a little bit weaker. They're going to opt for, I think, maybe this Janna might get locked in. I quite like this answer. You know, it makes your Ezreal stronger. It means that your bot lane compatibility is going to get a lot higher, and you have the chance to pressure Kaiser a little bit more. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Has the Dragon Lane method at all this entire series? I don't think so. Kidding <laughs> who's normally the hard carry for BRU, he dies at the start of every fight on Varus, but BRU win anyway, and that's because what matters here is mid and top. Well, it's, a, it's an investment, you know, Omo. You can't just direct or put all your monies into one particular stock. You have to diversify. Yeah. That's what it means to have a diverse portfolio, and BRU, they know that. Uh, they will go in and play towards the as well. Janna Lane, uh, supporter has shown keen interest in Janna, especially in the uh, Thai region. You know, being able to pull that out in multiple games prefers these enchanted type supports as opposed to a lot of the engaged type or Braum, Galio type supports that we've been seeing throughout this series. But Chai Dragons will wrap things up with the Kha'Zix, though not able to grab the Sin Zhao again. Uh, we'll see how this one goes. Yeah, they need to find something, right? They need to get someone to carry out of any position at all, and this time it's Syndicate's turn to try. What I do really like is the Galio Gragas combo, right? You have a lot of utility, you have a lot of CC, and you have beefy boys to stand in front of you, which I feel like has been something that BJD has been lacking. And now Syndicate on this Kha'Zix, it's a decent matchup into the Sin Zhao. This is his try to carry the game, it's his turn to try his best here. So maybe Shiba will be able to bring Look in the performance. Uh, we saw quite a <laughs> look at looking at them being quite We're happy. Fun. <laughs> yeah, joyful. In fact, uh, it's this third game, you know, it's going to be a quite nice one for BRU. You know, call it an early day, give the chance, give the uh, spotlight over the Fenway University and innovate in our third series for the night. But that being said, let's take a look back as we round off the picks and bands, the compositions that are available for both teams. Yeah, I mean, very standard stuff from BRU once again. Only thing that's a little bit oddball will be this Ezreal Janna combination, but we already kind of answered that, right? Like you said, it's kind of a substitute Varus in a mid game where he just sits mid and pokes you, and the Janna makes it so impossible for the Ezreal to ever die. That means BRU, they have full freedom to just play to the side lanes. I do like the adaptations on BJV's part to put Galio on Chili yeah. to give it you know, to give it to the mid laner, to let him finally try his hand at matching the global pressure here. And we'll have to see what Chili can do. Yep. This time around though, Acilia is going to be on a weak side. Gragas tank top. He's not going to take any fighting. He doesn't want to get camped once again. So I think Chili you might be what, looking more towards the bot side. We got to yeah. mention though, we're in the game. This is it. BRU, man against <laughs> Sorry, BJD. I got carried yeah, away. you know, you were still excited. I couldn't be a bad to stop you. Uh, <laughs> but this is the masterclass. We're taking a it lesson is. on how to count the three for BRU, for Buru Ram United. <laughs> Uh, as a, interesting stuff for BJD to clear out that mid wave and then rotate back down to the dragon lane. Yep. Definitely, definitely. And uh, I think they just want some leads for the Kaiser, right? They need to get some EXP advantages. I'm not sure if Kinemon and Supporter took the crux there, as is typically the answer, because I was so excited about the team <laughs> compositions that we were getting. But this time around, though, Noel seems like he's losing some traits. Maybe tanks were the answer all this time. Tanks might just be the answer, and it's something I think uh, only true. Uh, League of Legends uh, draft kind of fans, people that act in those analyst and coach roles can truly appreciate seeing yes. these uh, team, team drafts. <laughs> Only you guys can know that yes. and enjoy it's it some that much. fine wine, picking a tanks in the last game. It's, it's fine wine. <laughs> I, I'm a connoisseur of that. Game 5 tank picks. Aging into a, a nice match point tank pick up to see how <laughs> things go on. Uh, things are going to play off as BLU have a different approach to this game. They're going to bring Shiba down to match Syndicate, to put some pressure on this Kha'Zix, not give them a free opportunity early, as Asila will actually be the one to find the early initiative. Yeah, exactly. Asilia here doing so much work by yeah, Shiba. Flashing, but the win becomes lightning, and the gold card to connect, and claims the kill. It's first blood, the first in the blood for Bururam United. 
and that's gonna be BRU once again getting first blood. I mean, Asilia this time around, I don't really think it's that much of his fault. He tried his best here. He did pretty decent trading. Only problem is he walked into Shiba and you know, he, he headed all the way up until the point that he did it. But BJD though, pretty nice attempt here to swap sides of the map. It forced Kinemon back away, get a little bit of advantage in the dragon lane. But still though, Noel and Shiba once again, shutting down Asilia. I have to say, it seems like B, uh, uh, BJD is shaking off some of those nerves, moving around his unit, being able to rotate and match some of those movements, you know, albeit on the other side, uh, pressuring out Kinemon, forcing away, hit off the, him off the wave. You know, that was a great response, knowing the supporter has been moving around the map, so I really like what we're seeing from the Giant Dragon so far. Hopefully more of this moving forward, especially since it looks like with Winter being on this time, you have a couple of nice ultimates, you know, Tidal Wave, things like that weren't available before. Instead, we're relying on things like the Hero's Entrance. That's the oh, end game. Go. Gonna be proc, and that's the body slam to try and build some distance. Hero's Entrance comes through when it becomes lightning as they dash forward. The Crescent Guard knocks back Chili, and oh, it secured no. the first kill with the red card, finding nearly enough damage. But he dashes back in. That's the wrong oh, place no. to be when it becomes lightning, grabs the second. Yeah, I think the mentals on the side of BJD are just gone at this point. Archini looking for the gold card. And I have to be honest here, Archini, he's looked good this series, but he's been picking an awful lot of red cards, man. We've learned, you know, one to three, we've learned some vocab. Now we're gonna learn how to distinguish your colors as well for Archini, but it yeah. doesn't matter, right? We talked about how they need global answers <laughs> from the side of BJD. The global answers just went to the Baron Lane to feed. Like, that, that's it. I mean, they've tried everything. They've thrown the book out. They've thrown everything but the kitchen sink at the draft. Nothing's working. And at this point, I think BRG, they're happy with how things like Syndicate just donates one more. All right. Yeah, you gotta squash those roaches. <laughs> uh, we see Noel continue to pressure out. So I don't think they're gonna be able to find much more. You know, this is a conversation I was having a skimmy prior to the competition starting, uh, yep. talking about bugs and insects, and we mentioned how this taste for cockroaches. I think BRU feels the same. Want to squash out the competition early on, and maybe we have to start charging for this masterclass, Omo. Uh, not only do they get to know how to count up to three, they get to distinguish three colors, red, blue, and yellow. Uh, that feels like something chargeable. BRU is gonna charge for Giant Dragons for this risk by grabbing this Rift Cow early on. Smooth transition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Chili's trying to camp for Archon in the bush here. Oh, okay. Actually, it's gonna be Supporter who's managed to flash away, yep. bought himself enough time. Gokart hasn't been able to come through just yet. They finally managed to find Chili, and now dash in. They grabbed one kill, but it's a trade back as Chili will go down. Supporter is there as well. Yeah, and it turned out that BJD were not the ones camping, but the ones getting camped after all. The CC chain wasn't there on support lane. Once he flashes out, gets the monsoon going, they managed to take down Chili, they pick up the Mountain Dragon. Don't forget, they've already picked up the Rift Herald. Once again, smooth sailing for BRU. Nice moves from the giant dragon though to immediately recognize the dragon's gone. Let's take a look back in this fight because this was an interesting start to it. I think the Kai'Sa got some interesting angles. Yeah, the Kai'Sa had an attempt and flying in onto the backline. Oh, actually, he did pick up supporter. I didn't quite catch that. My play-by-play -play doing the work here for me. But still, at the end of the day, that means that Brewerum United, they get the objective still. Sagi picks up a Constellation prize. Skullbots 5-1, it's a little less depressing now. But still, I don't think it makes a difference. We're kind of sitting at the middle ground here, uh, Omo. We, oh my goodness, this is unfair. Blue That's the blue card. Oh, he still takes the flash away from a Scylla though, so I guess things work out. You don't have to worry all too much there. This this is Pavlov's card right now, right? He doesn't know what card actually picks, but because he's there and throwing a card at him, he's just gonna flash away. Yeah, has to make sure he gets away. Uh, looks like Shiba might be on for a second kill. They're moving into the mid side. Shiba's looking low. One more attack confirms it. Shiba claims that one. Still tries to walk back in, but it's a little bit too ambitious, I think. Look at Shiba, he doesn't care, he's on the turret, he's hitting you up. The, the knockoff of the tornado, one more attack from supporter, will find it. Bellis escapes, and over the side, Shiba's gonna go down. Not enough mana to take this fight on, supporter follows as well. Shiba binds and saves amount of time. A couple more hits, he's really gonna make this work. He finds the kill despite <laughs> it all. Winner, he Sorry, cannot take him down. Oh. Voice seeker misses out. Shiba, are you kidding me? 
<laughs> Shiba just refuses to die right now. Uh, you know, they always say cats have nine lives, but it seems like dogs do as well. Shiba refusing to die, but Bururam United refusing to lose a single fight. Six, zero, and two. This is a far cry from Syndicate Sinjao that we saw. Had to build Serax Gauge, had to just be full tech. This man has a Triforce. This man is going for damage. He's winning every duel. He has the Jana to buff him up. And Bururam United, nine and three, 7,000 gold up at seven minutes. Thousand gold for every minute of game time. Looking comfortable once again. I'm running out of words to describe the stomp and we are you. I think it's just a matter of time now. Yeah, it's been enough. It looks like they definitely look at this. Look at this. Zip. This woman comes I think engages onto BJD <laughs> onto three and survives I with all that damage. Now, Noel, yeah. he's in the final spot. The backup is here. The Calvary is here. Forces for Giant Dragon's back, but it looks like they got baited in to take oh. this fight. The bubble won't come through, and the flash away from the well cannot dodge away from Chili, who comes back to trade one for one in his top three. But look at Min and Bot. Look at the turrets right now. Look at Archini as well as Kinemon. They don't care about this fight. The outcome does not matter to them. And they just tell Shiba that they do manage to find this, and now looking for support as well. The flash away doesn't save him from the claws. And like you mentioned, the bomb side, the mid side being broken open. BJD late to respond. Man. Yeah, this is just Bruvam United just doing everything right now. They lose the fight, but it doesn't matter. And in all honesty, they didn't need to take the fight as well. It was purely a flex fight. They went for it because they felt strong. They thought they could do it. And like I said, right, the outcome of the fight really doesn't matter. You win, you lose, you get to turret. So why do you care? Yeah, still being able to find a decent amount. That fight was really just a, a... I don't even want to call it a distraction. Like you mentioned, it's just something they wanted to go for because kind of seemed like they felt like it. Uh, yeah, I have to mention yeah. here as well, Shiba's becoming so incredibly powerful. Now with yes, the Serious Gauge and the Triforce, despite not having Gargoyles, I think once he has that, uh, it's actually unkillable to BJD. Yeah, exactly. I think the Sterics is the big difference maker here, right? Every time we see him dash in, he gets a bit chunked out, he falls so low. With Sterics, that's not going to happen anymore. It's a nice attempt by BJD to take down Noel, but it's not going to quite happen. Infernal yep. Drake spawning up in a couple of seconds. Well, oh, he's right by the side. He tries wants to more. In. That was a cheeky little move there. Could have maybe waited for his Ezreal to find that shot. Kinemon had the uh, Trusha Barrage. Yeah, Kinemon tried to help his uh, Baron Lane out here. It doesn't quite matter. So you see a bit of a fight. I wonder how this one's going to turn out. Tidal Wave does get a good engage off, but it's going to be Shiba to charge. As for around United, see Noel coming in with a flank angle. They find the first cure. Surely it takes down Winner. And over into the mid lane, they continue on the aggression. Flashing forward from Shiba, they finally take down Syndicate. Moving on to Chili, who's expended everything that top lane. He goes down as well. The fight continues on the side as Anshini surely is going to take down Chili here. There's not much you can do. You find some time going golden, but that's about it. Be up. You find the four and take a beautiful fight in this big game. Just destruction right now. Noel comes in from the back. He just stretched through the members of uh, Jai Dragon, slices and dices. Who are you? They might be looking for an end angle right now. It's gonna be hard, but they're gonna get at least two inhibitors. Yeah, definitely scratch paper pin, so it's a little bit too difficult. Actually, dancing with death dodges away from a decent amount of damage, oh, but will oh. get caught by the explosive pass. A consolation prize for PJD, but honestly, look at that bottom side turret. Things are not too good for them. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, that's an understatement. What's gonna happen here? Again, he sees this. The title wave comes through. It's gonna be the engage. Led by Zilla. They try and lead on, but Shiba always cool down to back up. You can't take him down. He doesn't want to die. And the Aqua Prison only does so much. But a fight split up between both ends of BJD. They're leading the charge back on Shiba. gonna get caught. It's gonna be Kinemon. Then might go down to Chili. The Aqua Prison won't be able to do much more. And those ghosts nearly, nearly spotted up here. You and nearly took them down. to heal up. Back going up. back in. You're kidding me. This no, this not is over. it. This is not it. They can't look for this. You're kidding me. They don't want to go for this. PRU, they've had enough. They're just going to get the dragon. They want to reset. This is a bit too much, even for them. Syndicate gets caught. That's going to be the dragon. They might pick up the jungle, and that means Baron. That means Baron is on the cards now. Once they reset, they can't go for Baron Nesha. I think this is it. I think this is going to be... I don't said that like 30 times today, <laughs> but this is going to be BRU telling the jungle of resetting, and I think Baron is in the cards, but they've spent a bit too long taking the blue buff here. What's, going on? What's happened to Syndicate? Syndicate died uh, off the Archini yeah. on the side there, right? Yeah, and, he uh, botted in on top of Syndicate's head. Yeah, yeah, so losing the jungle there, like you mentioned, uh, was a Baron window, but I think it was how long we Blue buff over not. Baron, you, you know how it is. <laughs> they, they, they haven't recalled in so long. They could need some time to do yeah. some shopping, yeah. <laughs>
once again the tree call item so to state coming out for archery he's been getting these at ridiculous timings and look at shiba this is ridiculous that's it as well. equally ridiculous if not more shiba has been a menace to bgd now they're on the chili who's once in time and time Holy again tornado. tried to match up to blu and been caught off in the process that's the gold card whip becomes lightning gives them the information and intel might be able to lead the charge back in but shiba will kite by the side nope nice to assess dodges away from the gold card perfect timing from that as does my shiba uh Sanji finds the best to fight back with the monsoon repositions the fight they take down a second and nearly take down city kid for the last time this game but that's a huge win angle for the last time this game for the last time the series and that's gonna be damn I don't think They're it's either way we're going to save Tempted Flash and they just want this last kill. Pat the stat, BRU! That's all you need to know. Count the three. They got this series win. <laughs> Count 